You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom with your host, Dr. Janet Smith Warfield. Dr. Janet explores the meanings of our challenging and ecstatic life experiences, clarifies the meanings of words we use, opens up our minds to more freedom and choice, and offers insights into our everyday lives. Please welcome the host of Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom, Dr. Janet Smith Warfield. Welcome to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. I'm your hostess, Dr. Janet Smith Warfield. You are listening on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Today I have a most amazing guest whom I met, strangely enough, in New Zealand, although he is also an American. Uh, we met not quite a year and a half ago. Chad. Cooper is the author of Time Isn't the Problem, Four Strategies to Transform Stress into Success. And I have also heard him say, time is not the problem, you are. He leads his life by example. He he has played a multitude of roles during his life so far. He is an ex-Marine. He worked for IBM for a while. He does coaching and speaking and serving in Guatemala, a, a little community there. So, Chad, welcome to Dancing with Words and Dancing with Wisdom. Are you up to doing some dancing? ready to dive in. So thank you for having me on your show. Well, I'm delighted to have you. I know you have a very strong sense of purpose because that strong sense of purpose has manifested itself throughout your life based on all the things you've accomplished and all the things that you have obviously done, but can you talk a little bit about uh, when and how that strong sense of purpose began? Uh, Do you have any stories about um, how it really got somehow hammered into your soul? I don't, so let's talk about something else. No, I'm kidding. Um, (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) You know, when... When I said we're going to have fun, you just didn't know it was at your expense, but uh, we're, we're going to have a lot of fun here. And one of the things that I admire and appreciate about your message, Dr. Janet, is right in the top of what you represent is dancing with words. But if we don't really know our purpose – Sometimes that dance, as you say, is fascinating. Sometimes if we don't know our purpose, it's terrifying. And so knowing our purpose is critical to the emotions and feelings that we want to experience versus what we may choose to experience. And so the early part of my life, I didn't, I didn't have clarity what my purpose was. And so I went about the process of building, achieving, and and winning in all kinds of areas. And that was what you could say the the early chapters or the good uh, first couple of decades of my life were about. And what I realized is is while I was, was passionate about it, while I was committed 
and very good at building, achieving, and winning. What I also witnessed is because I didn't know my purpose, it wasn't always hitting the home run. It wasn't always connecting me where the activities were dancing with the feelings. And so I got to a point in having some extraordinary mentors in my life be able to show me some incredible skill sets. And I was very fortunate that often many of those skill sets aligned or worked in collaboration with my learn or with my natural born gifts. But when I realized that our purpose is not a set of things, it's not the title that we have, it's not the, the right neighborhood, how much money we have in the bank account, the right kind of, of influencers in our life. But when I recognize that my purpose is how I want to feel, a purpose is a set of feelings. That allowed me to dance with my purpose, dance with the words. And it allowed me to have clarity. And I, I, I would say that the first part of my life was about complex. And now my life is about taking the complex and making it simple. Because when we can make something simple, we can achieve clarity. And when we have clarity, we can go in any direction with our message, which means that we can dance with the words. So now I would say knowing my purpose and the importance of it allows me to say yes to things, to say yes and to things, but it may be later. And it also allows me to confidently say no to the, to the things that don't complement my message in who I am. And so today I would say one word of who I am is a connector. Mm. I'm a bridge from where people are to where they want to be. Because I understand with clarity what my purpose is. My purpose is to connect people. And I get that because I see that as being my purpose as well. As you may have guessed from the fact that I just connected you with John Santamu in Katwadi, Uganda. Um, talk mm. a little... Um, okay. Anything you want to say about that, or shall we move on? Well, no, that's a, that's a great example of when we know our purpose and we know that we can connect people, then those connections can become very powerful. And when we don't understand our purpose, those connections can maybe sometimes detour us or distract us or lead us down a path that doesn't serve us or the other person. And what happens is we can be serving missions that imprison us. But when we are able to know our purpose and serve our purpose with courage and make it an adventure at the same time, then we know that we're really effective and efficient on the connections that come into our lives. And whether we say yes, or we say yes, and it may be six months before I can, can find some space in my calendar for you, <laughs> or, you know, no, this isn't really a, a, a strong fit for both of us. And I really don't want to waste your time or value, you know, your 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 values, those kind of things. So, and I don't want to waste my own time either. Exactly. So I, I, as, as I listen in, as I'm listening to you speak, um, first of all, I think there's a real. Um, different focus between making a message simple, maybe not fully accurate, but very direct and to the point, and the dancing with words, dancing with wisdom, that ultimately can go into more depth, more expansion, more play, more joy. They're very different uh, focuses, it seems to me. And I think both are quite valid. It's really important to get a point across hard and directly, and particularly if you're in a difficult situation. A plane is going down. You listen to that pilot telling you exactly what to do, and you do it, and you do it fast. It's very succinct. 
And perhaps that is part of your marine training. I'm thinking it probably contributed to where you are right now. Come back and uh, list, continue listening to my guest, Chad E. Cooper, as we talk more about this uh, inner direction and this life purpose and other things that feed into being fully who you can be. I'm Dr. Janet Smith Warfield. This is Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. You are listening on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. I am your host, Dr. Janet Smith Warfield, with my guest, Chad Cooper, on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Chad, I, I have to laugh, first of all, because you say that um, having a good time might be at my expense, but I think that works in both directions. So we we dance and we play here uh, with the words. I'm just thinking, you know, what direction do we go from here? There's so many aspects of this that we could explore. Um, why don't you just just briefly give us some of the people that you've worked with, some of the people who have been your mentors, to the extent that you're able to do that, and then let's then we'll move on to another topic, which I'm also interested in hearing you talk about. So your mentors. Sure. So let's put a nice ribbon on um, the, the the previous topic and in, in how my mentors have allowed me to dance with words in a powerful way. And so I'll use an analogy who was not my official mentor or direct mentor, but I learned a great amount of wisdom from him, and that is Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs said that simple is harder than complex. But once you get there, you can go in any direction. And so what my mentors have allowed me to do is in simplicity, you have absolute clarity. And what allows you to really lead and serve others, including yourself, is that when you have more clarity than others, then it's about the ability to make decisions. And those decisions are really about that integration. So for me, mentors were hands-on experience of members in the Marine Corps. So they say once a Marine, always a Marine. But let's be honest, 
that not all the attributes or qualities of being in the military translate well into the civilian world. And so clarity in being willing to say, you know what, I'm willing to work for something hard. Becoming a United States Marine is hard. Let me tell you that. But it doesn't mean that you have to choose to suffer. Suffering is an option. And so if we want clarity, clarity brings power. And that allows us to serve people in a much more powerful way. And so I was able to take the greatest qualities of the Marines and then discard the pieces that don't work in the environment I'm in today, the civilian world. And then work with other mentors that allow me to then complement that integration with art. And so one of the things I admired about Steve Jobs is that he had absolute clarity. And the reason he was so impactful was that he was able to integrate a framework or process, similar to what the Marine Corps has, a framework and a process, with the flow or the art. And that allowed him to create some very powerful and compelling marketing and messaging and products that serve the world. So who are some of the people that have influenced me? My mentors, Bill Gates is an example. He's done all right for himself. Uh, Tony Robbins is an example for many years, was uh, a, a, an incredible and powerful relationship. And those are two examples of let's get things done, people that represent serving a mission. But as we see with Bill Gates, he changed his mission or integrated that into humanitarian work. And I also, as I said, you know, was building, achieving, and winning, realized I, I needed adventure, filling up, love and freedom in the process of achieving. And so I've worked with people such as Te Porojo, who you know and the world is about to learn from, the <laughs> oldest indigenous tribe in New Zealand. And to give you the audience an idea of who he is, he is friends with who he calls Billy, who many may know as His Holiness the Dalai Lama. When I was just there a few weeks ago, he presented my business partner with a walking stick from Nelson Mandela during his 25 years of incarceration. So these are a couple of people and the impact of their clarity and their message. And of course, we have our opinions about them, but has allowed me to become somebody who can dance with words, both with a framework and a flow or with a process and art. And I think we are also here dancing with our connections. I mean, that's what I am hearing. And it's also what I experience in the contacts that you and I have had, Chad, certainly with Tay Poraho, who may become a household word in the near future. Again, if there is uh, clarity, well, there is clarity in his message. But the man also knows how to dance. Um, let's move on Boy, to. Definitely. Oh yes, <laughs> you know I will never forget that guitar at the the uh, Waiataha compound in New Zealand, and I taught myself to play guitar years ago and and I'm also a singer my father was a music teacher I've done a lot of singing I picked up that guitar there was a string missing and I struck and it was out of tune I struggled to somehow sing with that guitar and Tay Poraho saw me struggling and he came over he took the guitar out of my hands and it was as if let's sing together let's make beautiful music together let's dance with the words dance with the wisdom wisdom and move into i mean clarity is absolutely vital i agree with you but also shift into a consciousness of power with power with other people and to shift the focus a little bit power with uh, something I'm going to call a power greater than myself you're listening to Dancing with Words Dancing with Wisdom this is Dr. Janet Smith Warfield with my guest 
Chad Cooper on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, Editing and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281 515 3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment LLC. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interests through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. I'm Dr. Janet Smith Warfield, your host or hostess, depending on whatever, however you want to perceive me. And my guest is Chad Cooper. We are on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. So, Chad, before the break, we were starting to talk about, well, we were talking about connections. And first of all, we were, it seems to me, there's first of all, connecting with oneself, one's own life purpose. And then there's also connecting with other people and connecting other people. And then there's also a connection with something I'm going to call a power greater than myself. You can call it God. You can call it Allah. You can call it universal energy. There are lots of terms. You can call it the Tao. Did I say that? <laughs> there are lots of, lots of words you can stick on this experience of connection with something that's much bigger than yourself so do you have that kind of connection i'm just watching you i'm sure you do but why don't you if you can verbalize that at all it's not my experience is it's not easy to verbalize but how would you do that just your words sure i'd be happy to and so for me as we're talking about words and being able to have clarity around that connection for me, that connection is, is really in one particular way. And that is, is I help people connect to their definition of a legendary lifestyle. So what is a legendary lifestyle? I believe that that is about taking responsibility and ownership about having or at least really about having the power to make and navigate your own purposeful future. And so it's about, as you said, beginning with the self-responsibility, the ownership to say, I have to be able to answer the question, am I enough? Because if we're fighting with, are we enough? I, I think it was the uh, um, Buddha who said, you can't give what you don't already possess within yourself. And so what I help people with is this time. I help them with really what the Waitaha in New Zealand represent is that anything you want as long as you do no harm. And as long as we're continuing to harm ourselves with those inner 
demons, those inside voices that we're afraid to let those inside words outside, then we're really not able to harness that power into a way that serves our own purposeful future. And so it really represents in the power of words, seven specific words in my message. So what are the characteristics of a legendary lifestyle? There are seven words. Let's write them down. The first is adventure. The second is filling up. So when we look at all the Disney fables as an example, that they have animated these old classic fables, in all the examples that there is a female, Rapunzel or Snow White, whatever, as she goes off on an adventure, and when we look at that, that's about experiencing everything, feeling everything. It's about being in flow. And it's unharnessed. It's wild. And that represents the part of us that really doesn't want to have necessarily responsibility. And so we can fill up in the process of that. The third element is feeling safe. So in a legendary lifestyle, it's about adventure, filling up, feeling safe, and speaking our truth through love. But we can't experience those traditionally without the other three qualities. Often, in order for us to feel safe, we have to have something that represents creating a sense of mission. And the challenge, of course, today is we serve multiple choices or multiple missions, right? We have the mission of our career, uh, climbing the career ladder as an example, or career success. We may have a mission of raising children and being a parent, of being a spouse, of our health, our finances, etc. And so it's about the ability to have the power to navigate each of those missions from a place of adventure that allows us to fill up, choosing that mission from a place of freedom. So number um, six is freedom. How many of us serve a mission, but we do it out of reluctance? We do it out of horse trading. I'll give you this if you give me that. And it's about the responsibility to say, I'm going to go on this journey freely. I'm choosing that, you know, whether that's to Uganda or Guatemala or your backyard. And then being able to serve that mission from a place of love. And so it's very much like a, an old-fashioned radio dial. And if you can imagine a radio dial in the old days, you had all these lines that represented a different frequency. And so our lives are often filled with the, the misnomer as many people, Janet, think, oh, I'm listening to, let's say, rap as in a genre, and they hate rap or country music. And they think, well, I'm powerless to change the station. Well, unfortunately, it's worse than that. 97% of the world is actually just listening to white static noise. <laughs> and so a legendary lifestyle is the ability, the responsibility to say you are responsible and are in cause to go out, reach out, and tune into the station, the vibration that you want. And so if we're dancing with words, it's about saying are these seven characteristics, these seven words allowing me to have a dance or a nightmare? And so it's simply about tuning into the vibration that creates music to our ears. And so we can look at those seven qualities and say, you know what, if I'm not happy, I'm not dancing with, with life, look at and see how many of these characteristics are missing in your calendar. So if you really want to know the quality of your life, look at your calendar and ask yourself, are the majority of events in your calendar have to do moments or get to do experiences? <laughs> yeah, nice, nice distinction there using your words. Uh, just to summarize and bring full clarity to your list, your list of words. Can you spit them out real fast? <laughs> you bet. So mission, freedom, love, adventure, filling up, feeling safe, and speaking your truth through love. And when we come back, I can give you some examples of where they shine and where we have leaders today that are causing abrasion. Terrific. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is Dr. Jan Smith Warfield with my guest, Chad Cooper. You're listening to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on BBM Global Network. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. 
In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. I'm your hostess, Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield, with my guest, Chad Cooper. You are listening on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio and a lot of other networks as well. So, Chad, um, can you give us some specific examples of these these? Seven characteristics of a legendary lifestyle? I can. And there's been a recent shift that some may recognize is similar to the 60s movement of the age of Aquarius. And what is shifting in our society is it used to be that mission, freedom, and love were the leading characteristics to our prosperity. And what's actually shifting is today, it's actually more about the adventure, filling up, feeling safe, and speaking our truth through love. And so when we look at that shift, it's not an abandonment of mission, freedom, and love. It's that those are becoming the supporting elements. So let's look at today, regardless of party affiliation, regardless regardless of party politics, let's look at the last election. And if you look at the evidence of performance, we can argue that, so we're not going to, is we can look at our president of the United States, Donald Trump. And there's a vast difference between speaking your truth and speaking your truth through love. And when we speak our truth, it often comes in the form of judgment. And they may be absolutely correct, but when it comes from a place of judgment, it becomes a wall and a message that we don't want to listen to or tune into. It becomes that genre of music that we say is like fingers on a chalkboard. We want to change the station, even though it may be a powerful message. But when we speak our truth through love, that allows empathy and compassion in almost like walking with us rather than judging us. It comes from a place of, I get it, and we still have hard work to do. And so what that does is it builds rapport. And so we can look at examples of the Dalai Lama as an example maybe, or Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ spoke his truth through love. Gandhi spoke his truth through love. Dr. King spoke their truth through love. But it still was a very direct and hard truth, but it came with, with empathy and compassion and it said, we've got to change. And so let's not mistake the truth for the message or the mission. 
And so it's about saying, hey, how we are doing this, who we are in the process of our doing this, maybe we need to make some course corrections. And so that's the difference between speaking our truth and speaking our truth through love. And we can serve a mission. In the old days, that mission was about the employer saying, hey, I need my employees to be productive. In exchange, I'm going to give my employees safety of a paycheck. And so they may serve that mission in prison, right? The prison of, I don't want to work on an assembly line, but I need to make an income. I need to take care of my family. So today we demand that the missions we're serving are coming from a place of adventure and filling us up. And that's what we're seeing with millennials. Because millennials are saying, you know what, there's something more important than a secure paycheck. It's about having experiences I can share for a lifetime. And so that's why our mission has to be done from a place of freedom and from something that we love, not something that is imprisoning us. Let's get back to this idea of speaking truth through love. There are some truths that need to be spoken, and they need to be spoken, it seems to me, with a great deal of clarity and forcefulness, but they don't feel good to the person to whom you're speaking those truths. And um, it seems to me you're really playing here in the arena of the Buddhist right action or Christian morality and ethics. You're talking about right conduct as opposed to yeah. the, the underlying maybe feelings or emotions or perspectives or thoughts that create the conduct or in some respects create the conduct. So, um, and, and also as I listen to you speak, I'm thinking of Te Poroho's Do No Harm. That to me is, it, maybe it's not speaking truth, it is speaking truth, but it's also living your truth through love. And I know you've talked a lot about um, simply being the lifestyle that you teach and talk about, that you are that. You have lived that, and, and, that, and that's why you can share it with others. Indeed. In fact, I'm going back to uh, New Zealand now, my fourth trip, I think, in, in the last year, because in, in this last uh, exchange, in, in bringing people, I lead teams to go sit with a wise sage. And when we're done, he says, I want you to come back as the student, because it's not enough just to espouse words of wisdom. It's not enough to say anything you want as long as you do no harm. What a great philosophy. Now go out and do it. It's a whole lot harder because <laughs> doing harm can be as simple as that negative talk in our head, harming ourselves by beating ourselves up. You're not good enough or you're not as good as this person that you saw posting something fabulous out on social media. It can be as simple as doing harm by flipping somebody off because they wronged you on the highway. It means the tone of voice in the way that we interact and speak with family members, people we say we love. And so we see this in each religion. And let's not confuse religion with faith or with our spirituality. See, as Buddha said, the finger pointing at the moon is not the moon. People go, what? In other words, just because somebody's a bad Christian doesn't make Christianity bad. And so with these seven characteristics, it's about understanding and speaking your truth through love is about the difference between doing what's moral, not what's modeled. It's about the difference of do what's responsible, not what's permissible, or do what's just, not what you can justify. And in that, that's a universal truth. Those are universal messages. And in Christian faith, we'd call those the parables. We have many parables, but we would call, I'm drawing a blank right now, um, um, what they would be termed. Meaningful stories. A, Meaningful stories that communicate a way of being in the world. Yes. That works. So, 
that the mistake in our, our society is that we have confused what is worthwhile as something that shouldn't be hard. And the things that matter the most are usually the things that we've worked the hardest towards. Suffering is an option. <laughs> Agreed. And we're at the end of our our particular segment here when we come back please join us as we finish up as i finish up my discussion with chad cooper the um, founder of legendary lifestyles this is dr janet smith warfield you are listening on bbm global network and tune in radio to dancing with words dancing with wisdom. Hi, my name is Myra Fox and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. This is Dr. Janet Smith Warfield. You're listening to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on BBM Global Network. And we're back with my guest, Chad Cooper. So, Chad, oh my gosh, where do we pick up from here? You were going to talk or tell us a little bit about the rule of 168 hours. What in the world is that? So the rule of 168 hours is understanding you only have 168 hours a week. What separates the boys from the men and the girls from the wisdom is how we effectively choose to use that time. How can somebody like Elon Musk or Bill Gates or Oprah Winfrey, who are running multiple companies, multi-billion dollar industries, able to do that? and still create work-life harmony when we're struggling, in some cases, just to pay a mortgage or get our kids off to a, a band rehearsal or sporting practice. And it really is about saying that we have to have a framework and we have to have flexibility. So if we look at Fibonacci spiral as an example, is Fibonacci spiral is often misinterpreted as just this spiral that never ceases. But in that equation, there's always a framework around it. And so 168 hours really is about saying we have a process or framework of how we want to utilize that time, but we also have to have flexibility in adventure and filling up in the process of our doing this. Otherwise, we're just like a bunch of robots. The reality is, is you cannot win a Formula One race You can be the best driver in the world. You can have the best car set up and the most advanced technology in the world. But if you do not do one critical thing, you cannot win that race. And that critical factor 
is a pit stop. See, you have to pit stop during a Formula One race. But it's critical that we know exactly through science and through process when we pit stop. Too late, your tires get slick and you crash into the wall, you don't finish the race. Too soon, the competition laps you and you take too long in pits. So it's about being able to say, I need to be productive creating get-to experiences that serve my purpose and that I take time to recharge my batteries or take that pit stop. And that's a lesson that Bill Gates learned from Warren Buffett that said he used to think having his plate filled to the brim was an indication of his level of seriousness and commitment. But when he realized that he needed to tune off, turn off being so productive, and that includes social media, that includes binge watching in Netflix or Hulu or whatever, that when we actually turn off, that's where creativity flows. And that's a message that Steve Jobs got. That's where his creativity allowed him to then be productive in creating something very powerful. Bill Gates has learned that. Elon Musk has learned that. So sometimes going faster is done best by slowing down. And the word that comes to mind as I'm listening to your talk, actually there are two directions I'd like to take this one. The first one is... What comments would you have about pacing oneself? What I would say in pacing oneself is about listening to and understanding your audience. So we know what, that there's I'm talking goal. about yourself, not about your audience. Pacing yourself. Ah. Not So I'm not talking about the connection between me and an audience. I'm talking about Got the it. connection within right now. The pace of our, our own race. Got it. Got it. Thank you for the clarification. So the way that I determine and pace myself is it's critical that we have two things that we measure with. If we look at a map, you have to know three things. You have to know where are you at, what's the destination, but the third is this little key in the corner called the legend. And that is, is how far does this fingerprint equal in terms of miles or kilometers? And so we have to measure. Otherwise, what happens is we can get off course. So how I measure my pace are through the seven characteristics of a legendary lifestyle. When I'm looking at my calendar one week at a time or 168 hours, as I literally will take seven days, line it up, and I'll say, am I clear, zero out of ten, on my missions? Plural. Yep. So if I'm on vacation, I should not see a mission of work or career. If I'm at work, I shouldn't see a whole lot of vacation built in. So it's about saying, am I clear on the mission for the next 168 hours? The second is, am I freely pursuing these missions? Zero to ten. Third is, am I, am I pursuing these missions from a place of love? In other words, is my purpose incorporated in the activity? And I will go through all seven of these. Is there a sense of adventure? Am I filling up? Do I feel safe? And am I serving my mission while speaking my truth through love? So if we looked at Dr. Martin Luther King as an example, or Gandhi, their 168 hours would probably light up as very favorable, 70 out of 70 or, or their, thereabouts each week. They could look at that and say, yeah, all seven of these qualities are there. If not, then maybe we need to take a pit stop. Maybe we need to change the pace of our race and figure out how do we complement or bring in the qualities that are absent. Or maybe speaking our truth through love is saying no. Or maybe we look at it and say, you know, yes, I can do that, and I need to push it out three months from now. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense in the context of a physical world. But I, as you're speaking, too, do you make a distinction, for example, between goals and intentions? For me, they have a very different energy. And the way you're speaking, I hear you very much focused on goals. Um, and uh, I can see we're not going to have time to finish this aspect of the discussion right now. But when we come back... We will talk more about goals and intentions. This is Dr. Janice Smith-Warfield with my guest, Chad Cooper, on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom, 
BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, know there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Welcome back to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. This is Dr. Janet Smith Warfield on TuneIn Radio and BBM Global Network with my guest, Chad Cooper. And I started to ask Chad before the break about whether he saw a distinction between setting an intention and setting a goal. It seems to me a goal is a very masculine way of thinking, whereas setting an an intention is a much more open way of being where you are allowing support to come in and help you manifest something that may even feel impossible. So any comments about that, Chad? Oh. Yeah, thank you for, for asking because, as I said, the early chapters of my life were about building, achieving, and winning at all cost. And we have some great models and examples out there today. We have Tom Brady, Super Bowl champion, who after his fourth Super Bowl said, tell me there's got to be something more. We have Brad Pitt, we know, who's had some, some difficulties in his personal life that said, Look, I'm the guy that's got the, the wealth, the fame, the, the airplane, etc. And at the end of the day, it doesn't help you sleep any better. And so what I recognized is it isn't just about material attainment. It isn't just about setting goals. Because we are spiritual beings living in a material world. And so it's about understanding the rules of the game. If you're going to choose to be in the material world, you need to know how to play by the rules. But it also means you have to play better than the referee's bad calls if you want to win both materially and spiritually. So for me, it isn't about either or. It's about designing a, a 168 hours by your definition of success. It's about saying it's a yes and. and so I can go and, and achieve in my career, but make no mistake – I have meditation, I have devotion, I have gratitude journal time, and I have personal time to exercise, to spend time in relationships. I just spent an entire weekend giving a eulogy in in a funeral for a dearly loved family member. And I took off three months to go serve in that capacity at the expense of my material attainment. So it's really about saying, who do we want to be in the process of our doing? It isn't just about logical and physical. It's about emotional and spiritual combining for a yes and life. (sighs) 
And yeah, I mean, there, there's so much you're saying here. There's so much integration. So there's, it seems to me there's both an expansion and a contraction. There's I, intentions. I mean, you, you, it's, you still sound very goal directed to me with your calendar and your very specific schedule. How much flexibility is there in this? I'm wondering what if something new comes into your awareness? Does this shift the calendar for you? And we don't really have a lot of time to talk about that, but these are questions that come up for me as I hear you speaking. I, I, you want to address them real, 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 yeah, so real me- fast? <laughs> Let me let me say I would direct people to chadecooper.com, and I have a 12-week course that actually allows people to figure out what is that integration, what is that right balance, because it's not by my definition or yours. It's by theirs, and that's where we begin is that foundation so you have clarity. What is your standards, or what are your standards? What is your purpose? And unfortunately, we're going to have to end there. Please go to chadecooper.com. Next week, join me when I chat with Delia Yeager. She's an author, a healer, a spiritual living expert, and she calls herself a spiritual polyglot. She works with individuals to turbocharge their lives and businesses by awakening personal sovereignty, reconnecting bodies with the infinite selves and joyfully playing human. This is Dr. Janice Smith Warfield. You've been listening to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This has been Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom with your host, Dr. Janet Smith Warfield. Listen each week as Dr. Janet uses words in atypical ways to shift you into experiences beyond words and transforming turmoil into inner peace. Here on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.